Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome once again to Celebrating Act 2, where John and I get to speak with Manny Pacheco about all things Hollywood forgotten and some not so forgotten. And some not forgotten. So Manny, it's great to see you again as always, but I have something I have forgotten. And that is, I was watching an old uh, Thin Man movie. Mm. Uh, William Powell, Myrna Loy, and Asta. Love, love the dog. But I forgot, was that from a book? Was that was that a, su su a successful book series they turned into a movie series? Yes. Ac actually, it was a very successful book series, as most of them are. I mean, all you have to do is, let's say, look at Tarzan and look at... Uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, you get these wonderful written books sure. that talk about the films. And, and in, the, in the Thin Man case, uh, it, it's absolutely a book that was written by Dashiell Hammett, the man who wrote The Maltese Falcon. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And it was directed by one of the really forgotten great directors, Woody Van Dyke. Uh, didn't do all six because he died rather young. But he also he also directed Manhattan Melodrama. He was one of the great directors over at MGM. So, yes, Dashiell Hammett uh, wrote the thin, the original Thin Man movie uh, book, and of course they 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 turned that book into a, a screenplay and and a movie. So yeah, yeah. And there were you you said there were six uh, six Thin Man movies altogether. Right, yeah. there was six, and um, all quite good. Um, there's a lot of fun and people, you know, in social media that likes to rank them. I think everybody's going to agree that the original is the best because it was a pre-code film. Uh, there was a lot of drinking, a lot of uh, frivolity, uh, things that make pre-code really, really good. And and really, Myrna Loy was able to step out of uh, being typecast as these exotic beauties because she had dark hair and turn her into really everybody's favorite wife. The yes. Thin Man and Manhattan Melodrama were the two films that really turned Myrna Loy's career. And, of course, she's a product of Venice High School. I got to mention that as well. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Venice High School out near Santa Monica and the West Side for sure. But um, William Powell and, and, and Myrna Loy were so good that six of their 14 films were going to be Thin Man films. And, boy, people just could not wait for these films. The original Thin Man had a colorful cast of characters, and as in all of the Thin Men, Thin yeah. Mans, um, there were some people who were going to become stars. Cesar Romero makes an appearance in the Thin Man. Uh, Maureen Sullivan, Marino Sullivan makes an appearance in the Thin Man, and some great character actors. Uh, what, uh, Edward Brophy is 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 in the Thin Man, and he's just absolutely wonderful. You know, in fact, he ends the film when he says, "I'll be a monkey's uncle." <laughs> so yeah. let me ask you. Let me ask you a question, uh, because my favorite character was Asta, because he's always in cross. I do, um, do crossword puzzles all the time, and he and uh, or I don't know whether Asta was a he or a she. Quite frankly, I don't. Not that it matters. Uh, and Alan Alder, either Alan or Alder, are those four letter clues uh, that show up all the time. Was was is there a special reason, do you think, why they had to have a dog uh, to be part uh, of their I, family? I think Dashiell Hammett wrote a dog into the uh, into his book, although uh, it wasn't a wired haired terrier. It was a different it was a different breed of dog. But Asta was such a cute dog that they had to they had to hire they had to hire this particular pooch. I mean, he was so good. He he had made some other movies as well. Uh, bringing up baby comes to mind. So I mean, there was there was I mean, he he was a movie star. Asta was a movie star, bona fide movie star. Mm. <laughs> well, it was it was such a great series, um, not only because of the mystery in every episode uh, or every uh, plot, but because of the interplay, the uh, the dialogue between the husband and wife. Yes, it's just so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Very wonderful. They never really lost any of that. It's it it's very very cute. And that's that was the the chemistry between William Powell and Myrna Lloyd. Now, after the first film, they the two years later they made After the Thin Man, 
And after the Thin Man is notable because the villain, not to, again, not another spoiler alert, but here we go. The villain happens to be James Stewart. And when was the last time you saw James Stewart in a vil as a villain? He usually yes. plays yeah. a hero. I can think of Malaya in 1948, but he actually is the villain in the piece. And uh, that's, that's pretty notable. And of course, uh, uh, again, another cast of wonderful character actors, not particularly uh, my favorite uh, Thin Man. Uh, I, I'm going to get some heat for this, but it's probably my my fourth favorite Thin Man. I think most people think it's their second or third favorite. Then it's followed by another Thin Man. And um, um, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of another Thin Man. Uh, C. Aubrey Smith is in as a character actor, but I don't, uh, uh, Patrick Knowles. I'm not enamored with the characters in that Thin Man. I'm not even enamored with the um, the story. There is one underlying theme that runs through all six, and it really is particularly important in the third one, that Nick Charles sends a lot of people to prison. The character, you know, uh, Nick yeah. Charles. Yeah. He has a ton of prison friends, and they're all named like Soapy and Snarky and yeah. Speedy, and they all have, a, well, one of the bad guys, or one of the, the, the prison Parolees in this particular happens to be Shemp Howard of the Three Stooges. No, and really. <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of cute. Now here's the other thing I want to mention: the Thin Man, the actual Thin Man character, is not Nick Charles. It is the first victim in the movie. In oh the no, kidding! Movie. Yeah, the first. So after the Thin Man, he's going to do another case. Another Thin Man, he's going to do a, another case, and be, it, because it's like a Thin Man case. They called hmm. it the Thin Man case. So the oh, victim of the first movie is the Thin Man. Er, 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 Nick Charles is not the Thin Man. I want to make sure you know you understand that. Oh, I never the knew that. Movie, yeah, the fourth. You have to be movie, a real fan of the movie to know that. Yeah, and the fourth movie happens to be my second favorite, and I know I'm going to get heat for this because it's nobody's second favorite but mine. And that's Shadow of the Thin Man. And that's the one about the, the jockey getting murdered. Donna Reed's in it, Barry Nelson. Mm. I, it is a really very well done Thin Man. I think that the storyline, all you need to know about Shadow of the Thin Man is the scene involving sea bass. The, the sea bass theme is seen in the restaurant that leads to an amazing fight because of Asta. Yeah, it is, is is one of my favorite favorite uh, scenes in any of the Thin Man. Manny, I, is that is that the film where Donna Reed plays a bad girl? No, no, she's a she's a good girl in this. Uh, she's not a bad girl, or she's never really a bad girl, but she does play a a lady who is very adventurous, a lady of the evening, shall we say, a call girl, in uh, From Here to Eternity. No, no, no she, that's okay. All yeah, right. she is the friend of, of a reporter who gets accused of the murder. Oh. And so, yeah, Donna Reed, a young Donna Reed in this, because we're talking 1941. She was really at the start of her career. The yeah. next one most people consider the weakest Thin Man, it's my third favorite. And that's the Thin Man Goes Home. He gets Nick Charles gets to go home and visit his dad, who's played by Harry Davenport, one of the great character actors of all time. And his buddy is Edward Brophy, who was in the first Thin Man, but he's playing a different character. And um, Lloyd Corrigan is the villain. And you might remember Lloyd Corrigan is the mayor of, of Santa Rosita uh, in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. I, I love the storyline on this one. It's very modern. It's a very modern storyline talking about government secrets, which 1945, you're talking World War II. So you're talking right. about very, very modern. A lot of people think that this is the weakest of the Thin Man, Thin Man series. I really like it. To me, um, the other one I don't care for is the last one, uh, is Song of the Thin Man. But I do like Keenan Wynn, who plays kind of their, their pal through the whole thing. And it does feature Gloria Graham. And I think Song of the Thin Man might be the closest to a film noir of any of the six, except maybe the first one. So it's very, it has a lot of noir elements to it. Yeah. And, and when you have Gloria Ga Graham in the movie, I mean, how could it not? Yes. And uh, <laughs> it and it has wonderful jazz. I just don't like the villains in the, in the film. And a lot of the characters who are who are suspects all kind of look alike. So it's very confusing. If you you have to watch it two or three times. So, so Manny, I have a question for you. And was the last of the six. Well, then I you can confirm this. If you can confirm this, I would be amazed. But um, 
I, I did a little research, and of course, what you find on Google is always suspect unless you've gotten it from 12 different sources. Uh, but uh, the rumor was that I think it was whatever movie was made around 1945, um, that the Maltese Falcon had two names that were used for atomic bombs, Fat Man and Little Boy. And now that you, you, you tied together the author relationship between the series, apparently there was a third unused atomic bomb and they named it Thin Man. Well, it was used. It was tested in New Mexico, and it's actually in the second, in first chapter. Oh, really? So that's a true story. story. Yeah, it's a true story. Uh, wow. the thin, uh, uh, because the, the, the scientist who helped put together these bombs uh, was a big fan of Dashiell Hammett. So his first bomb happened to fall in New Mexico as a test, and that was called the Thin Man. And then the subsequent bombs that went into Hiroshima and oh. Nagasaki ended up being called the the little boy and the fat man out of the, the Maltese Falcon. So yes, that's interesting you bring that up because that was that's actually a story in my book. And it's a story I like to tell actually when I'm when I'm doing oral presentations. Yeah. Very familiar with that story. Now now Manny, cool. you've been ranking your favorite uh thin man movies. There were only six of them. But I missed I mean, did you mention which is your number one favorite? Oh the original. I, I think most people love the original. It, mm. It's really well done. It's got a lot of pre-code. I mean, it's funny that the Thin Man stretches. Oh, there's only six, but it stretches 14 years, and it and it stretches from the end of pre-code to the to the to to film noir, and yeah. so it, it covers a lot of elements, and um, and it's it, it's the breeziest. They 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 drink a lot more. They get away with a lot more. There's a lot of sexual innuendo in this that they could not get away once the yeah. the Hayes Code went into effect, mm -hmm. and that makes the first Thin Man really by a long shot wow. the best of the six and and it's and it's just it's a wonderful it's a wonderful piece um I, the other five are good i mean he, and here's the thing between the second and third or the third and fourth uh william powell had cancer and now he beat mm -hmm. it but yeah. that was the reason for a delay between two of the thin mans and quite frankly folks were worried about his health and he's noticeably thinner in one of the Thin Mans because he went through, a, you know, the, the health problems that he did with the cancer. Mm -hmm. But he came back and people were waiting for him to to, to play uh, Nick Charles again. And, and he did. And he went on to make a, a few more after that. I think as he got older, though, it became harder for him to play the Thin Man. If you look at the sixth one, the last one, he's a lot more heavy. He looks a lot older. Mm -hmm. And the hair. And here's the other thing. The hairstyles of Myrna Loy, if you look at her from the first one to the hairstyles of the swing era and the, and the, and the middle ones to the kind of that of older course. kind of matronly woman in the, in the last one, yeah. it's, it really is a cultural journey of sorts. And it's, and it's wonderful, it really is. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a great series and um, I'm surprised they didn't make more, quite frankly. Well, I'm going to get a lot of feedback for saying that The Shadow of the Thin Man and The Thin Man Goes Home are two of my favorites, especially The Thin Man Goes Home, because mm -hmm. arguably many uh, film historians rate The Thin Man Goes Home as the least of the, of the six. But I, I can make a case for it, I think, uh, but, but they're going to disagree with me and shoot me down. But that's OK. That's why we do these things, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we all have our own taste. Well, yes, thank you, Manny. The Thin Man, third atomic bomb, really. Well, it was actually the first atomic bomb. First. first. Well, the th first. of the three, the one that wasn't dropped. That's right, because it after they dropped the dropped second one, they, they hoped they'd surrender because they didn't have another one. But yeah, that, they ran that out was... Of... Yeah, yeah, so there you go. Well, anyway, well, is... uh, I'm, I'm going to actually go look for it on... Netflix or TCM or someplace, because I remember watching them all growing up as a let, kid. Let me just offer this as a, as a conclusion. New Year's Eve, Turner Classic Movies always shows all six to really? bring in the New Year. Yes, oh, no New Year's Eve, they do that on T TCM. And the movies, you know, that movies channel called Movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, they'll play all six in a row on a given day as well. Yeah. Excellent. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube.
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.